Good morning, everyone. Welcome to DCC Today. This is our Wednesday edition, our 15-minute program of information and encouragement for the Dungeness Community Church family and anybody else that wants to watch. Uh, we start every day with a photo of the day, and our photo today was sent by Kathy Hamilton. Now, Kathy married the photographer Ross Hamilton, and it appears that the skills are rubbing off. And Kathy took this picture of the elk down at Dosey Wallops. And uh, I think they just saw this elk herd a couple weeks ago, if I remember correctly. Uh, it's always fun to see those uh, elk moving around. And Dosey Wallops, there's quite a bunch of them down there. So Kathy, thank you for sending that in. Um, announcements coming up. Sunday morning, of course, we're continuing our series on the book of James called Faith Has Feet. And then I talked about this some on Monday, the summer celebration uh, that's coming up on August 30th. And we have made the decision that we're going to move this year. We're going to move from Cary Blake Park over to the Cole Farm, which is at 577 West Squim Bay Road. And uh, what it's allowing us to do is to do a drive-in service. And by making this a drive-in service, there are no limits to how many people can come. Everyone's just in their cars. If people are outside of their cars, if they're trying to be seated on the grass, then we're limited to 200 people. Everyone has to be in mass. Everyone has to be socially distanced. All of those rules apply. But the, the thing that's a real problem is that you have to limit how many people can come. Uh, with a drive-in service, there's no limit. And because this is the first chance we have to all be together, we don't want to put any limits on it. We also want to make sure that it's an environment where everyone feels comfortable. And so you can be in your car. If you want to have the windows rolled up, that's fine. If you can, you can wear masks, that's fine. Uh, we will allow some limited seating outside on the grass, but it is limited to those 200 people. And so we're going to have a registration form that if you would like to do festival seating, bring your own chair, you'll have to register and let us know. And it'll be a first come, first serve basis for that. But if you're seated in your car, there is no limit. The cars will be parked in such a way that they're all distanced. And so it should be a great time for us to be together. Uh, the sound system we're using uh, will have good coverage. And it also has an FM transmitter, so you can pick up the sound on your car radio as well. And uh, we've got some great stuff planned. We're gonna be recognizing Pastor Wayne on his retirement. Never had a chance to do that. The guy retired after years of service here. We never got to really recognize him altogether. So we're gonna do that. Uh, David Piper and Lauren are coming back up. Uh, they moved to Portland to start seminary. They're gonna come home for the weekend. We wanna recognize them, thank them for the years that they've given in youth ministry here. Uh, we're going to have communion together. I mentioned on Monday that we've actually got these pre-sealed, sterile communion cups with a wafer already sealed in with it. And uh, we can pass those out. It's perfectly safe. And we can all take communion together. Some great music, uh, be sharing from the Word. So just plan to be there August 30th. And we'll let you know as soon as the online registration is ready to go so you can get signed up. Main reason for registering is so we have some idea as to how many cars we're going to be parking. But there is room for everybody. Okay, devotional thought for the day. This comes out of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 54 and 55. When the perishable puts on the imperishable, and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? This whole pandemic that our world is convulsing over is such a, a panic for so many because we don't know how to control it. We, we haven't yet come up with a vaccine that can maybe slow it down or put a stop to it. And for some people, it's no big deal. They get a little sick and they get over it. But for other people, as we've seen, um, it, it is deadly. And, and it's frightful when there is something that could take our life away that we can't control. And yet Paul reminds us that because we're in Christ, these bodies that are so perishable, that are subject to 
viruses and car accidents and cancer and old age and everything else that eventually comes to every one of us as a mortal human. It says these perishable bodies someday become imperishable and mortals become immortal. And no longer do we live worrying about or in fear of death, the thing that think that seems like it'll swallow us up. He says, no, because of Jesus, death itself is swallowed up. He can say that death, where is your sting? It's not that death doesn't hurt. When we lose people and we've lost some people in these last few months, and it is painful, it hurts, but we don't lose without hope. If we're in Christ, there is hope for a bright future. And so, yes, we're concerned about the coronavirus. And yes, we want to love each other and be safe and be smart. But ultimately, we don't have to be in terror of something that might take our life away because uh, our life is secure in Jesus. Well, we have another interview today. Jennifer, who do you have? Hello, everyone. Our guests today on DCC today are the Greenlee family, and they are all together, kids and mom and dad. Um, they came all the way to the church because we had a little bit of internet problems when we first uh, recorded this, and so they have been steadfast and agreed to come down and do it at the church. So here they are today with us in the chapel, and they're going to tell us a little bit about their family, introduce themselves, so some of you who may not know them can get to know them a little better because they are newer to our church. So um, John and Nika, how about if you tell us a little bit about your background, um, what you did before you came here and how you guys ended up here. Okay, so my name is John Greenleaf. Uh, we've been here in SQUIM for about two years. Uh, we moved from Alaska. Uh, I actually lived in Alaska my whole life uh, before that. I uh, lived in interior Alaska, so uh, near Fairbanks, where, where it got very cold winters. Uh, we'd get down to 50, 60, below zero in the winter. And then uh, it was had a lot of darkness in the winter, too. Uh, it would get light about 9.30 or so and be dark by 4 o'clock in the afternoon, 3.30, in a couple months of December, January. Um, but of course, in the summertime up there, it's actually light 24 hours a day. So there's some extremes. Uh, anyway, beautiful country and state. So I live up there and then uh, my family's up there. I met Nika uh, up there and we were up there for about, we got married in 03. So we lived up there together uh, for about 17 years. And then we just moved back down here um, a couple years ago uh, to the school area. So that's a brief okay. Nikki, you want to give us a little bit of your background because you're a little more local. So, yeah. so I was actually born in Squim, and my parents were both chiropractors, or they still are. And my dad still lives around here, Joseph Burkia, and my mother, Leslie Van Romer. She doesn't live around here anymore, but she lived here for about 30 years. And so I was actually born and raised here, went to the public school, middle school, high school, and I went up to Alaska when I was 17. So for my senior year, I decided to go up there to a private Christian school. And uh, then I stayed up there and then met John and, you know, and everything else that happens after you get it <laughs> and everything else, right? <laughs> Whatever, yeah. And I went to school to be a teacher and, and so I taught up there and um anyway and so we i was up there for about 20 years and then we okay. decided to relocate and my sister is actually a chiropractor also she lives in squim um my brother-in-law uh, rob thomas that she's married to he's a chiropractor so my <laughs> stepmom is a massage therapist uh robin or kia so a lot of, she actually comes to the church and okay. so people know her too and uh yeah yeah, my brother lives around here, so it's it's nice. Uh, more of my family lives around here. And what do you do, Nika? Are you a chiropractor? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I contemplated that actually uh, because I really enjoy working with people. So I I actually homeschool the kids. Okay. So I was a junior high English 
history. And actually, I love drama. I like teaching drama. Uh, I did that in Alaska. But then coming back here, uh, they didn't go to the private Christian school. It was very small. Um, the place where I actually worked also. So I homeschool them. And then I actually, I'm also a dance teacher. So I teach dance um, at Aspire here in Squim and all my kids take classes. Okay. So Lexi take five, four? Four. Four, four and then Dylan takes two. Um, and then I teach there. And, and last year I taught six classes. Okay, any particular type of dance you teach or? Um, okay, so I love tap and jazz. So I love teaching tap and jazz are probably the things that I love. But now recently I've really gotten into I really love modern and Christian lyrical. So I taught a Christian lyrical class last year and I taught uh, adults. So I like teaching adult classes. And then I teach littles. I'll okay. teach, but that's just what I taught last year. So I tap jazz and then Christian lyrical. Okay. And what is Christian lyrical? I'm not familiar with that. I kind of made up the term, but it's basically uh, modern. But what what you do is you take a Christian song that, I mean, it has to be a certain type of song, you know, uh, the musicality and that sort of thing has to be um, a certain type to dance to. But you take the lyrics and you base your movement off of the lyrics. Oh, okay. Yeah, so the whole point, it, it's kind of like a, a spiritual um, way to interpret the song. Only you do it through dance. So my daughter, she helped with the younger, I had a younger Christian lyrical class and she helped with that. She did a really good job. And then I had an adult Christian lyrical class. So we would talk about the lyrics mm -hmm. and I would sometimes spontaneously have them move how they wanted to, or I gave them a choreography that mm -hmm. I, so it's kind of my interpretation and choreography. So in that way, it's like modern. Mm -hmm. It's, a, it's a, a different way to worship, which is really cool. So yeah. I really love it. I, I really, really enjoy it, but um, it, it's, it's different. So it, but it is, it's a different way to worship the Lord, I, I feel. Okay. Well, John, and tell us a little bit about you. Do, what, what do you do during the day? What is your line of work? Uh, so I work for the county. Uh, so I work out of Port Angeles at the uh, maintenance shop there uh, near the fairgrounds. Um, so I'm a mechanic. Uh, I service actually pretty much all the automotive stuff for the county. So I service all the sheriff department vehicles and uh, the county, uh, you know, assessors, park vehicles, all the road department vehicles. Um, that's primarily what I do. I help I help with the heavy equipment stuff sometimes, depending what how busy I am, but I mostly do uh, the automotive uh, maintenance for the, okay. the whole Okay. And so you guys said you were um, in Alaska when you met. How did you two meet each other? Uh, well, I went to school the same school she went to when I was okay. a year ahead of her, but I, so I had a lot of friends and people and I knew teachers and stuff and I actually, I help. I volunteered sometime teaching in some of the uh, phys ed classes. So with the boys, I did um, some acrobats, acrobatics, and gymnastic stuff. Anyway, so we met there when she came up there. I we met there. Uh, okay. So okay. And so you the kids, you guys grew up um, most. We went to the same church. Yes. Just oh, to be. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the kids, you guys grew up a good portion of your life in Alaska. So tell me about how that was. That was fun. It's much different here. And what are some things you liked about being in Alaska? What did you enjoy about it? Well, we could sled and build more stuff with snow. And we, it's just more cold. So like you can do like the snow actually sticks like you can go ice skating and sledding and, and you actually hit, um, you can hitch tires behind trucks and then sled in those. Yeah, we would do a rope, we would do a fun thing we do in the winter was a rope pull, which is what she was talking about. Yeah. Take a rope behind trucks and tie sleds. Okay, nice. <laughs> um, I really like to play with my friends there. They had a lot of friends up there. Yeah. I, that much friends here yeah 
That's okay. Yeah. And so you guys have been here for how many years? Refresh me, like a little over? Has it been a year or two years? Okay. Two years. And I think what's just difficult about the friend thing is, is I homeschool. So mm -hmm. because I homeschool, uh, we tried to do a group and that sort of thing, but they had a lot of friends up there. So it's, it's very different, you know, yeah. when you transition in a school setting and a lot of your friends are built in there to a homeschool setting where, and we do dance and we do that most afternoons. And that's a lot of time and a lot of effort and they make friends there. But then we're, you know, in the morning we're at home. So it's just right. Right. Yeah. You're doing soccer, right? You? Yeah, I was doing soccer. So he was doing soccer with the Squim Youth Group. No. Or, I mean, not the Squim Youth Group, but the Squim <laughs> uh, Youth Soccer Program. Okay. So he did that for Squim Junior Soccer. Yeah. A couple seasons, but of course that got canceled. Yeah, year. I think that's the other difficulties right now with quarantine, um, probably even trying to get together with friends you do have. I would imagine it's a little difficult right now with. Um, for sure. Yeah. 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 But, um, well, tell me a little bit, John, you also lead our worship team. We see you up front. So tell me a little bit about your background with that and um, yeah, how you came to start doing that. Um, well, yeah, I started, the, the church group we were in Alaska, it was a, a smaller church. Um, so the, I started helping out actually when I was pretty young sometimes in high school, I started helping out leading worship or being a part of the worship team sometimes. So I did that. Um, worship and singing was a pretty, it was a pretty big part of our church, more than even some churches. Uh, so I got involved there when I was younger and then started leading worship. Um, um, my brother also leads worship and my other brother plays the piano um, is one of the yeah and actually my fourth or my third brother also plays the trombone so he we all our, my family's involved in the worship very uh, musical family <laughs> so anyway so when i came here we came to dcc and i think the first service we were here um one of nika's junior high teachers mr magner yeah, mr magner Kevin magner Kevin was on the worship team playing guitar. So we just happened, to, he sat right in front of us. We were sitting right next to him. And so we got talking to him. I don't even think my wife recognized him I did not recognize him. <laughs> but it's been so long. There's yeah, a like lot of years teachers that I don't recognize really. Yeah. I don't anyway, so we got talking to him uh, after the service for a few minutes. And my wife said that I had helped with the worship team where I was from in, in Alaska. So he immediately encouraged, he took me right away and, and took me off to meet uh, Sean Stanton, who was the worship and music director at the time. Mm -hmm. um, so I got introduced to him in the very first service. Uh, okay. And then the next service, I got talking to uh, Miss Burnett. Uh, and she's, of course, on the worship team and plays the piano. And I didn't even know she was a pastor's wife. But anyway, so I kind of got, I got invited to help, help out there. So I started helping pretty much right away. I started helping uh, some. Yeah. So. Yeah, and we have a wonderful worship team here. So we're really blessed by you and all the members of our worship team. You guys do an amazing job. And I know during quarantine, it's been quite different <laughs> with singing to an empty church. Um, I'm sure that's a little bit more challenging, I would imagine. Yeah, for sure. I'm, uh, it's certainly more difficult to have more of a studio feel as opposed to a live, obviously, in the moment together feel, um, which I certainly miss. But you're doing the best you can, so uh, it's very nice that we have a, we can still get together and do it. And, um, yes. Well, okay, guys, I really appreciate you coming and sharing just a snippet of your life with us and uh, letting our church get to know you guys better. I, we get a lot of comments that people love these DCC Todays just because families they don't know. Um, it's just a way to get to know each other better. So we appreciate you guys taking time to let us get to know you just a little bit. and. John, if you would lead us out in prayer today, I'd really appreciate it. Sure. Thanks. Lord, we thank you for your family, Lord. We thank you for the DCC Church, Lord, and your church uh, everywhere, and the opportunity we have to be a part of your family, Lord. We thank you that you are a faithful father to us, Lord, that you take care of us. Lord, we thank you for all those that are serving, uh, especially now in these different ways to stay connected. Lord, we ask that you would strengthen all those uh, and battles today, Lord, that are struggling in different ways with all that's happening, Lord. Thank you for your hope that we can trust you, Lord. 
We ask that you'd go with us, uh, that we would be in your spirit as we go through a day in our, our life. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate you joining us. Yes. All right. Thanks for joining us. I trust you have a great Wednesday. We'll be back here again Friday morning. And until then, God bless.